Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and welcome to the Chaos Dwarf Rules Leak. This just happened last night, um, but I had to sleep and do things in the morning, so uh, here it is for you, uh, finally. Um, we're going to have a look at all the rules. Funnily enough, it took me that long that uh, the unboxers have got their hands on things. There's more information, so it's actually worked out quite well. Um, so yeah, this is this is the stuff that I was brought to my attention last night. We've got hobgoblins, the same as they always were. Um, that's that's fine, right? Nothing to see here. They carry the ball, they foul, they, they assist blocks. They You've got to kind of protect them a little bit because they're easy to remove. Um, but, you know, they're hobgoblins. They're, they do what they've always done. You can have up to two hobgoblin sneaky stabbers, but nobody competitive will do. Um, you're paying 30k to get stab, which is okay. And shadowing, which is very, very minimal, and minus PA, which is, of course, bad. So, like, it's re <laughs> If they were 60k, I could see taking them, you know, paying 20k for stab. But I don't want to pay 10k for shadowing and 20k for stab. It, it's just too much. Especially when you compare them to, like, Dark Elf Assassins, who are only 15k more, and get plus movement and plus agility. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> that's, that's quite and agility access they don't even get agility access at least if they had agility access you could like give them dirty player sneaky git right and and stuff so yeah they are they are rough players um the chaos dwarf blocker is is as how we all knew it would be right iron hard skin change for tackle apart from that they're the same as they always were av10 plus move four strength three you know, block and fix skill are both great. Ironheart skill is actually good, right? It's it, they're, they're going to be better in progression than they were compared compared to before, but obviously worse in like NAF style because Ironheart skin is very low impact in that, and tackle is very high impact in NAF style. They still got agility mutations on secondaries. Interestingly, a team with seventy k rerolls has no passing access at all even on secondary so there's no way to get leader on this team and as you can see from the chaos dwarf blockers they are not a four we a lot of this we knew right um that's that's obviously terrible you've only got four blockers when you look at how bad the flamesmith is and this is the killer right we kind so so this the, the rumors about the flamesmiths weren't entirely correct the the, the old rumors may, maybe they were true at the time and they got changed in development who knows but yeah, the Chaos Dwarf Flamesmith, he's 10k more for plus movement. That's that's good, right? That's actually good. However, he swaps block for brawler, which is a huge downgrade. Absolutely massive downgrade, because you're gonna have to get block at some point now for this player, right? Brawler is not good enough. Um they lose iron hard skin, despite they should be like more likely to have iron hard skin, right? It was something that happened to like sorcerers, so it's really weird that they don't get that. Um, they keep thick skull, and then they get breathe fire, which we've seen the rules for that. Very low impact, um, unexciting special ability, really. Right? They, you can use it versus strength four defensive players, strength four blodgers. Um, that's about it. It's it's not great. And they get disturbing presence, which again is low impact. So, unfortunately, the flame smiths are a bit of a killer for Chaos Dwarves. It's hard to be positive about them when I'm looking at the Flamesmiths and the Sneaky Stabbers. They are they are not good players, but you kind of have to have the Flamesmiths purely because they're not AV8+. Plus. You kind of have to have two of these, and it's it's a huge downgrade to the old Chaos Dwarves. Now, Chaos Dwarves are one of the top, top teams at basically all TVs, so it's it's not... You know, it's not too bad that to have nerfed Chaos Dwarves, but it's, it's a huge nerf when you consider... The, you know, the claw nerfs, the piling on removal, and also the brick tackle nerf for strength 4. Speaking of which, here's the bull centaur, 130k, movement 6, strength 4, agility 4+, plus, AV 10+. Plus. Interesting that they're really bad at passing. Honestly, what I would have liked to have seen in this edition, with having, um, having a separate PA, you could have fun combos, right? Bull Centos could just be PA2+, plus, right? Why not? Look, when you look at, like, the NFL, you know, you've got guys like Jamarcus Russell. They really like people who can throw the ball really hard. So, and, you know, strength four players, like, wh why shouldn't they be able to just be really good at throwing? That could be, like, a cool, interesting thing that maybe not people are going to use, but it could be, like, something that happens, right? But, um, yeah, sprint, show feet, thick skull. No iron hard skin on these guys. Um, despite the fact that in the fluff, 
bull centaurs literally turn to metal. <laughs> um, I, I googled this and you can see there, as they age, their flesh hardens and distorts almost to the consistency of living metal. <laughs> and they can't even heal from injuries, they have to be repaired um, with metal things. So yeah, that's that's kind of wild that bull centaurs, they're literally metal, <laughs> they turn into metal eventually. They don't get iron hard skin and they're the ones that really want iron hard skin, right? If you can foul any player, you foul out a bull centaur, so it's, it's sad for them that they do. And also, this is a big one for like very um, counter to the fluff. They get mu mutation access on secondaries now. So that's going to mean that you could take claw on them. You could take two heads if you combo with break tackle. And you could take iron hard skin on them. But the problem is it costs 40 TV. So you're going to have to get it with a random skill, which that's just bad, isn't it? You know, having to random on them. Like it's so many SPPs and there's so many misses. You only got three hits. You, you could also random agility, right? You've got dodge, defensive, sidestep, all of which are kind of hits. But like, it's just... It, they're too expensive in in cost and SPPs. It's just you know an amount of time spent to just keep playing to to random agility or mutation on them that you're just not going to be able to do that. Um, oh yeah. So re realistically, we we can ignore the Minotaur. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's got in Channel Fury, which is better than Animal Savagery because killing your own players is bad. And apart from that, it's just the same as it was. Um, but I mean, I'd never take it. So, we, <laughs> um, there's a bit of clarity about Iron Hard Skin. Um, again, this is further confirmation of all the stat lines and everything. And you can see, you can read here, it's, it's very, very small, but you can read the Iron Hard Skin. Opposing players cannot modify, opposing players cannot modify any armor rolls made against this player. In addition, the claw skill cannot be used when making an armor roll against this player. This replaces the Iron Hard Skill in the Blood Bowl rulebook. So what this means, people said there was no modifiers before, right? But you can have defensive assists if you're getting fouled. So the good thing is you can actually defensively assist them when they get fouled. It's not completely no modifiers, um, only up, so essentially only negative modifiers. So that's good confirmation for the Ironheart skin buff. Um, when it comes to like progression for these guys, well, I can show you the build first. The, the build is actually unchanged from uh, Blood Bowl 16 and CRP, it's it's just the same as it always was, except, you know, the the instead of having six blockers, you've got to downgrade two of them to flamesmiths and pay more for the pleasure. But their old team was 980, so now they're still a thousand, so so this is what you're getting, twelve players, two rerolls, it's it's rough, right? It's really rough. You could maybe drop a flamesmith and have three rerolls and eleven players, but that just seems like really bad, right? You could drop down two of the flamesmiths to hobgoblins to have a reroll, and then you've got four blockers, but only four blockers. You've got too many hobgoblins, right? They're going to get beaten up. It's it's rough. You kind of need the maximum AV ten plus on the field. So yeah, this this is looking to be the only realistic build way to build them. Um, when it comes to progression. Your hobgoblins, you know, they're just going to get like block or wrestle or dirty player, probably random uh, general on them. Or, you know, you could, the first one, a skill could take block or wrestle to like, you know, increase your, uh, increase your, it's also sure hands, right? And make one a ball carrier. If you get sure hands or block as a random, then you could then build them up with plus movement and stuff. Um, you could also random secondaries on them. You could get dodge to build one into a carrier, sidestep to build one into a carrier, and of course sneaky git to then take a dirty player as a chosen skill. Uh, sneaky stabbers I'll never ever use. <laughs> Blockers um, and flamesmiths are essentially the same, except flamesmiths have to start with block, and then you're going to want guard and stand firm and mighty blow and tackle. Unfortunately now some will have to have tackle. The bull centaurs want a whole load of skills. They want block, of course. They want mighty blow. They want tackle. They want guard. They might want break tackle, but it's the problem is it, if you take break tackle, you need combo with something. So you might have to roll stats, hope for a plus agility, and then you can have plus agility and break tackle, and they can be a bit more ball handling and, and still break tackle on a two plus. You could get plus strength on them, and then that makes their 
two plus that gives them a two plus break tackle because they'd be strength five then so you you know you could definitely roll stats on them as well they, they can get plus movement to be really fast they can get plus eight one plus av to be uh you know harder to hit they could also yeah i would as i say i would shy away from the agility and the mutation just because it's prohibitively expensive in either tv or time <laughs> basically so yeah there's a few progression ideas here's further confirmation there's the bull centaur with the player cards everything's up for pre-order now um, and you can see mutation it's not a min it's not a misprint <laughs> in case you're wondering they've got agility mutation there so that's not a misprint or a mistake in any way the bull centaurs definitely have that and uh, look rather cool as well there's also a couple of stars and um, they've been, we've come out with the the unboxes have got these star players the so the star players are now completely unveiled we already knew Hathark was strength six that had been confirmed and some of his skills had been confirmed however what hadn't been confirmed though i had heard as rumors of it is the defensive so that is a fantastic star player really for 300 and i'm sure they said 330 i don't know why i thought 330 but it's 300 gold which is more expensive than varag right varag is 280 so hathark he's in a tough spot right he's got to be more expensive than varag but less cheaper than morg so at 300k i guess there was people were thinking maybe he was strength five but i thought if he's strength five he's just he's worse than varag right so the defensive really helps and the strength six is incredible. Now, now he becomes actually really quite cheap for 300, right? When you think of Morg being 380. Of course, Morg has mighty blow plus two, which is unbelievably good. But Hathark's, you know, strength six defensive is great. He's got block, he's got break tackle. So he's got a two plus dodge with break tackle because he's strength, he's strength five plus. Sprint your feet thick skull, of course, because he's a bull, block, juggernaut. And he has this blitz. Every single turn he can reroll a single block die, so he's very unlikely to up skull, and he's going to get more knockdowns when he blitzes as well. So yeah, actually great star for 300k, and uh, Badlands Brawl, as well as Favour of Shud can take him. So then what we can do is we can actually look at this, we get a little hint of Favour of Shud here. Any of uh, Anyone? Now, that may be anyone with the Favoured off special rule can choose, instead choose to be Favoured of Shud. So that means that maybe Chaos teams could be favoured of Hashut. That's interesting, isn't it? That's interesting. We'll we'll need we'll need you know further confirmation down the line, but um, yeah. And then here's Zarg Madai. He is strength four. He's got a sizable increase in cost though, 130. He was 90 back in the day, so he is pretty expensive for a secret weapon. Um, that that is a problem. Uh, you know, Cannoneer, Hail Mary, Pass. Nerves of Steel, Sure Hands. So, you know, he's got all of the passing things. He doesn't have Iron Hard Skin because I guess he's meant to be a Flamesmith somehow, except that he uses a Blunderbuss rather than Spitting Fire. I guess that's why he hasn't got Block as well, right? But he also hasn't got Brawler. He's just weird. He's just a weird player. Secret Weapon, a very expensive Secret Weapon. And uh, the Blunderbuss Special Action, it's just worse than the North Star player guy, isn't it? But it's not, it's not terrible. It's it's really not terrible. <laughs> um, you know, three plus to knock them down. Well, not knock them down, right? To make the AV roll. And it's within three squares. Now, the problem is, on a one or a two, it's really bad. <laughs> really, really bad on a one or a two. But it can give you, like, almost a free roll to knock over the ball. It's interesting. It's, it's hard to justify, honestly, 130k only getting him for a half. As cool as strength five is, uh, strength four. Sorry, I <laughs> misspoke. As 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 cool as strength four is, it is really hard to justify a hundred and thirty k secret weapon. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, Zarg not great. I mean, not not terrible, right? Perfectly usable. He's PA three plus as well, so you actually can use him as like a thrower, right? With the sure hands and Arch four plus, and then the PA cannoneer, etc. You can actually use him as a ball carrier, like I don't think you would. But you could, like, you know, a desperation two turn. Maybe you bring him on to try and pass it. It's not what I would do, but, you know, situation you would, right? The, the, the rules of Blood Bowl is do it sometimes. So, you know, there will be times you'll want to use Zarg um, to, to pass. But overall, I think he's not very exciting. Hathark is very exciting. It's an absolutely valid counter option to Varag Ghoul Chewer. Um, or, or of course, uh, Lord Borak, 
um, if if Chaos teams can be favoured of Hashut, which we we will find out, I guess. Um, I think Norse Norse can be favoured of as well, can't they? So yeah, who who knows? Who knows if uh, if you can do that <laughs> but it'll be interesting to find out we should find out soon but you know all the stat lines are there and yeah looking forward to finding out all of the details of favored of for shut and uh you know i think the models are great i think a lot of the rules are letting us down really with the chaos wars they're not as good as they used to be but like that's okay isn't it it's hard for them right like it's it's hard getting it's hard things that were good being nerfed. Now you could argue that Chaos Dwarves were too good, right? They won like six chalices on Blood Bowl 2. They were a monster team in the old rules. So you could argue that they've been over nerfed. You could argue that now they're fine. Uh, and, you know, may maybe they are, but, you know, coming from, from my point of view, it's it's rough. I, I think the models look great, but it feels like they've been maybe over nerfed. And maybe the most exciting thing about it, about the team, is Hathark as a star player. For a, for a bunch of teams, right? Um, so yeah, that's in fact here's Badlands Brawl. I can show you that Black Orcs, Chaos Dwarves, Goblins, Ogres, and Orcs can all take him. And uh, favored of, we'll have to see if if any team can be favored. Well, any team with favored of can be favored of Hashut, and then that will open up to more teams as well. Right, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.